Romans chapter chapter 3, verses 21 through 26.
coming to his house and worship him. His spirit being in truth. A couple of things I wanted to make sure I got to before I uh, read the word and have a word of prayer with you is one, we want to give a shout out to Charles Shaw Baker. A drummer for graduating with his master's in man. Responded in unbelief. 
Because he responded to unbelief, because he and his wife were elderly, and she'd been barren all those years, and the possibility of God actually doing something that miraculous in his life, and he being the father of John the Baptist, was so impossible, he was stricken mute up until the time of the birth of the baby. Here's the beauty of this. When he sees Jesus, he begins to bless God. Amen, somebody. And I thought about that for a moment. Sometimes God has to make us be quiet in order for us to understand the magnitude of what he's doing in our lives. And isn't it amazing how sometimes God takes us through a quiet spell. And when we come out of that quiet spell, we've got a new song in our hearts and a new song on our lips and we freely give God praise and now we've gotten out of our own way and we begin to see that God can do anything that he wants to do. Amen. Raquel and I uh, went to see the lights at Lafayette Park. We wanted to go to the celebration of Oak they were sold down so that's still on our list to get done. It's something that I haven't done in a long time because the kids are out of the house but it's something that Raquel loves to do, the girls love to do. And I made a couple of observations as we were looking at the lights uh, this week. Uh, Lafayette Park uh, has this elaborate, festive light display. Mm -hmm. Lit up all through the park, and, and listen to this, it includes things such as Star Wars, Marvel, DC Comics, uh, the Minions, Disney Princess, Star Wars, Peanuts, uh, other favorite classes. There, there, there'll, there'll be special appearances from Santa Claus, uh, Rudolph, and Frosty, and the Grinch. Mm -hmm. And when I thought about that, I said, that's beautiful. I told her, I can't even lift it me up, can't this, you know, for a period of time and make me feel good. Uh, but, 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 but in my mind, you know, I kept thinking to myself, so the world holds up these lights mm, come on. Come on, to tell a story. All right. But it's not complete unless you tell the real story. All right, all right. So for a few moments, if you don't mind, that's, that's the topic of my sermon this morning. Hold up the light. All right, amen. And, and, and I've been noticing uh, as I get older, uh, I remember many years ago, I think it was probably in the early 80s going to the 90s, uh, theologians, psychologists, sociologists began to use this term called postmodern. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you might hear it uh, phrased this way, postmodernity. And, and what it really means is when people stop believing in absolute truth. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it means that people stop recognizing ultimate authority. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what it means is people begin to adopt their own sense of reality. Mm. Which means that you and I can see the same thing. Uh -huh. And you can tell it your way to make yourself feel good about it. Or I can tell it my way to make myself feel good about it. But what it boils down to is that we are slowly escaping the reality of God's word. Slowly escaping God's authority. And now we're even experiencing what's called revisionist that means to tell about a factual historical event, but shape it in a manner to fit your own viewpoint. Mm -hmm. I thank God for Zechariah's song, though, mm -hmm. because Zechariah holds up the light of blessing by holding up the light of Jesus. Amen. Uh, 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 he specifically connects Jesus' birth to the fulfillment of Isaiah 9-2. Isaiah said in Isaiah 9 2, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Mm. Zechariah says, because of the tender mercy of our God, and I've got to pause parenthetically and say right there, uh, everything I'm about to say to you, uh, you have to understand that the greatest gift that you'll ever receive or have ever received from God is a gift of mercy and grace. Yes. I believe that many of us would look at life differently if we understood that God's goodness yes. is not guaranteed to us. Yes. Uh, if, we, if we were to pause parenthetically and realize that every time my eyes wake up, if nothing else happens to me that day, I ought to thank God for a new day. Yes. Uh, I Every worship experience, 
Merchant, 
He said, I don't even, sure, I don't even train them to become a beggar or a thief if you allow me to control the environment that they come up in. Come on. We gotta ask ourselves some hard questions sometimes about the conditions of our communities that God has called us to serve in. Are we really being light? Or are we just passing through like a glow stick? Or are we passing through like fireworks giving temporary illumination but doing nothing about those who sit in darkness? I argue with you that we need to hold up the light. We see a classic example of this in John 5. The Bible says that Jesus went up to this festival that they had every year and um, there was a pool of water and all the lame, blind, crippled people came there and laid because the legend was that every year that an angel would come down and trouble the water. Mm -hmm. And Jesus noticed that there was this one particular brother who had been in Italy laying there 38 years. You would think that Jesus would have a little compassion on this brother. But Jesus asked a question that I think we miss. If he wasn't being mean, he just wanted to know, what is your psychological state? Mm. Because sometimes you go through something so long that you don't even want to get better. Lord. So Jesus asked the question, do you want to be made well? Mm -hmm. I, I submit to you that you've got to be a willing participant in your own deliverance. Mm. That there's some people in your life that, that you've been giving a whole lot of time to, mm -hmm. that if you take a step and be honest with yourself, maybe you need to find another candidate for deliverance because that one don't want to be delivered. Mm -hmm. So Jesus asked the question, do you want to be uh, healed? So of course this brother had to be like, we do have to tell his story first. Uh -huh. He said, well, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. This is what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the great civil rights leader, called the excuse of friend mentality. Yeah. That means there's always a reason why I can't be what God called me to be. There's always a reason why I can't stand up for truth. There's always a reason why I can't be the best that God has called me to be. And I want you to know what Jesus said. Jesus said, pick up your mat yeah. and walk. Get up. So Jesus said, I'm just trying to assess your willingness to, to, to walk in God's power. And all I'm trying to tell you is that when Jesus shows up and shows you a light, you need to walk in it. That's all Amen. Amen. When the light shows you a way out of your darkness, you need to walk in it. Let me say it again. When the light shows you a way out of your darkness, you ought to walk in it and instead of talking about, well, I don't want to leave so and so in the dark. Well, guess what? If, if, if they want to go, they'll follow you. Mm -hmm. Amen. We need to hold up the light. Yeah. Because the light becomes liberates those in dark. Secondly, the light brings life to those under death. Mm. It's right here. He says, to shine upon those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death. The text tells us very clearly. That Jesus came to bring light into the very shadow of death. Every day, we are reminded by this with the rising number of deaths from COVID-19. Yeah. Just this morning, I saw on the news that we're fastly approaching 300,000 deaths. 300,000 souls won't see another sunrise. 300,000 souls won't hug grandchildren, spouses, children, won't attend special days, won't have an opportunity to do anything. And get 300,000 souls. 
a little bit good. Your evangelism strategy would probably be more effective. If you quit trying to tell, if you quit telling people that God wants to save them, uh, to give them a job, a car, a spouse, and tell them God wants to save you from the wrath of his judgment. Lord. Are you walking with him? Yeah. Uh, uh, I think it's safe to say, again, that what we, what happens at the death we really fear. But the good news this morning is that Jesus is light that shines and brings to those who sit in the shadow of death. That's what the psalmist says in Psalm 23, 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Uh, the believer's mantra now becomes, I'm not afraid of death. I'm confident in my belief. That, that, that really ought to be our mantra because here's the reality. We're all headed that way. Yeah. Uh, uh, as someone said to me about 20 years ago that I didn't understand, but I understand now. I've got more days behind me yeah. than I do in front of me. I'm headed that way. But thank God, I just like anybody else, I don't want to die. I'm not looking forward to it. But the reality is that I'm not afraid of death. I'm confident in my deliverance. Great question. Glad you asked. It frees me up and gives you an answer. Because according to 1 Corinthians 56 57, the stain of death is sin. See, we fear death because we're sinners. Uh, uh, and those who have not been delivered from death, uh, uh, from sin, are afraid to die because they know that sin buys us an eternal ticket to being lost forever from being separated from God. That, that's the true curse. Is eternal separation. Yeah. But here it is. My Bible says in the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus. I, I hear the question, how did he do it, oh, Pastor? It's in Hebrews 2 9. Jesus, who for a little while was given a position a little longer than the angels. Yeah. And because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. That means that because he died, I don't have to die. That means because he died, you don't have to die. That means because he died, he died in our place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So you don't have to test it. Guess what? Every believer yeah. is one way away from glory. Oh, we want to be That's what Paul said. That my, 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 my time is at hand. And he said that I'm getting ready to depart. Yeah. He said that I'm looking forward yeah. to meeting Jesus, to receive the crown of life that is stored up for me and everyone who believes that he is the Christ. Yeah. We have something to look forward to. We, we, we're going to simply fold up our tent down here, put it in our backpack, get on the escalator, and head on up to heavenly orientation. Come on. You ought to be excited about that. If you are convinced, just remember how death when, when Jesus was here on earth. Everywhere Jesus went, he changed death. Yeah. Jesus attended four funerals in, during his earthly time on earth. Uh, he, he, remember Jairus' daughter, who was laying up there dead? Jesus came and said, get up off your bed. They had the professional mornings downstairs. They prepared uh, 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 the funeral arrangement. Jesus showed up and she got up. You missed it. Uh, uh, that was funeral number one. Uh, funeral number two was uh, the widow named son. Uh, they had already had the funeral. They were having the graveyard procession. Jesus stopped the graveyard procession and said, get up. He got up. Oh, Lazarus had already been buried. Yes. He had been laying in the grave for four days. Jesus stood in the graveyard and said, Lazarus, get up. Get up. And guess what? Jesus said, now, don't think that I got power over everybody else. And they got no power over my own situation. Right. My Bible said they crucified him. Yeah. Hung him between two thieves. Buried him in the grave. Yeah. And three days later, he rose all power in his hand. Yeah. He's proven that he had power over death. Like the old folk used to say back home. That's why our greatest anticipation in life is not the paychecks, the cars, the cash, the creature cover. Our greatest anticipation in life is that great getting up morning where we're saying, well, saying, well. Yes, Lord. Th that, that's our greatest uh, anticipation. Yes, Lastly, the light brings leadership to those without direction. Mm. It's right here in the B clause, verse 79. 
to guide our feet into the way of peace. Guide, this word, gives the sense of to direct, to straighten something out, to make something straightforward and simple, having no deviations. Here's the reality. None of us know how to walk for God as we should. Oh, God. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 53, 6 mm. in the New Living Translation says it best. All of us. Yeah. Not y'all. Not some of us. Not, 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 not your bad cousins. <laughs> not your family members. Not just your co-workers. All of us. Uh -huh. Like sheep yeah. have gone astray. We've all left God's path to do our own thing. Uh -huh. That's why I folk running around telling I'm going to live my own truth. Mm -hmm. Even though my biology says I'm one thing, I declare I'm something else. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why you got folk running around saying that the light wasn't red and I didn't hit those people, they all ran into me. <laughs> See, when we declare our own reality, I wish I had a witness right now. Uh, we began to do things our own way. And here's the beauty of the text. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was wounded by our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and through his stripes. Yes, we are here. Jesus came to give the light of guidance. When we received him as our Savior, uh, we were given three heavenly helps uh, that make the difference between us knowing where we're going and just wandering around angels. Jesus gives us three heavenly helps when we uh, receive him as our Savior. Number one, he gave us a new heart. Thank you, Lord. According to Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is desperately wicked above all things. Who shall know? Jesus made us a new creation according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man or woman be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. The whole all things have become new. So he gave us a new heart. Then he gave us the Holy Spirit. According to John 16, 13, the Spirit of God who dwells in the heart of every believer. According to John 14, 16 through 17, he gives us direction and leadership as we go through life. No more are we left to figure it out on our own. The Spirit knows the mind of the Father and guides us in the ways that please God. Is there anybody here who's glad that God gave you a new heart? Is there anybody here who's glad that God gave you a new spirit? But lastly, God gave us His Word. When we were saved, the Lord gave us a heart to follow Him. Uh, he gave us His Spirit to guide us. But then he gave us his perfect word to teach us about his ways and how to follow him in our lives. Psalm 119, 105 says it this way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm so glad that the light of Jesus has shined in my heart. I'm so glad that I was sitting in darkness. Computers can't work. Uh, 